Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So, today we will discuss about the error estimates in the polynomial approximation. So, <coughs> today topic is errors involved in polynomial approximation. As we know that, suppose, suppose this is my function. So, let us I plot this function. So, I take the sine function. So, let us suppose my f x is equal to sin x. Now, suppose the value the function sin x is not given to me, but the values of the function at some points is there that is given to me. Suppose I choose this point, then this point, then this point. So, I am taking the equispaced grid points. So, at this point this is the value of the function. So, this is the value of the function. At this point the value of the function is 0, then I have this value, then this value, this value is given to me, this value is given to me, then this value is given to me. So, like this value is given to me. So, I have these points, so that I call it x0, y0, this is x1, y1, this is I call it x2, y2 and the same way I can go in the last one. So, suppose this is my x and y n. So, these points are given to me. Now, in this case what I will do? I will take the polynomial interpolation. So, the polynomial interpolation will be what? Which is passing through all these points. So, I will start with from here suppose it is passing through here. Then the next point is here. So, this is the point. The next point is here. So, it is going from here. Then the next point is here. Then the next point is here passing through this point, then passing through this point, then passing through this point and so on. So, this is my interpolating polynomial and I know that if it is points, so I have a k plus 1 points implies that the interpolating polynomial has degree less than equal to. So, this, this is not k, I, I should take it n plus 1 points and degree would be always less than equal to n. So, now what is happening that this is my interpolating polynomial and the this red one is the actual function. Now, somebody ask me that what is the value of the value of the function for this value of x. So, if I take this value of x, this is my value I am going to get when I put this point in the interpolating polynomial, but the actual value for this value of x was this one. So, from here I can say that this is the error involved in this case. Similarly, I can choose different different points and from there I can find suppose I want to choose this point or this point. So, in that case suppose I take this point from here. So, in that case you can say that this is my actual value and this is my approximate value. So, that, that this error is involved. So, I want to find out what will happen about this error when I approximate the interpolating polynomial passing through all these points. So, this is what we want to discuss. So, let us uh, write down that let us suppose that the values of a function. So, in this case this is my f x which I have chosen as a sin x are prescribed at 
n plus 1 points. So, that is given to me x 0, x 1, x 2, x n and value of the function is given to me at this point is y n. So, basically from here I can say that f at x naught is y naught, f at x n is y n. So, this is given to me. Then we can approximate the function we can approximate the function f x by a interpolating polynomial interpolating polynomial. So, I call it p x of degree less than equal to n because the maximum degree is n. So, it is degree less than equal to n which passes through the points which passes through the points x i y i is satisfying y i is equal to f x i. So, this is for all i is equal to 0, 1, 2 up to n. So, we can approximate the function f x by the interpolating polynomial p x which degree is less than equal to n which passes through the points satisfying this relation. And you also from here you can see that at this points the nodal points whatever it is given to me. So, at this point this function and the interpolating polynomial are coinciding. Only problem is to approximate the values in between these points. So, from here what I do is that I define the function. So, let we can write the function f x as p x plus some error term. So, I call it r x where r x is the error in the approximation. And what is the x is? So, x belongs to from x naught to x n anywhere between the value x naught and x 1. Now, we know that since f x i is equal to p x i. So, that is already given to me. From here, I can say that this implies that I can choose my r x that is equal to x minus x naught into x minus x 1 x minus x n and then I take k x. So, because at this point when x is equal to x i is for all i is 0, 1, 2 up to n, this is the same value. So, whenever this is the same value, the error will be 0. So, that is why I choose the r x in this way. So, whenever I put the any of the nodal point x 0, x 1 or x n, this the error term will be 0. So, now from here I know that the k x is the function I have chosen. So, from here my equation number 1 can be written as, so equation 1 can be written as f x is equal to p x plus r x I can write as this one. So, this factors is a multiplication of this all these factors. So, I can write this as a pi x minus x i where i is moving from 0 to n. So, this is the uh, sign of multiplication into k x. So, now, now I call it the equation number 2. Now, from here now my what I want to find? I want to find what is this k x. So, this k x I want to find. So, what I do is that let I choose a point x bar be any point in the interval 
x naught to x n open interval other than x i s. So, I want to find any point x bar which is other than this x i because at x i this is same. So, I want to choose another point then from here I can write that this is equal to x bar is will be equal to p x bar plus so i from 0 to n x bar minus x i into k x bar. So, this x bar is any point I have chosen so it can be any value. So, let us take this x bar is here somewhere. I will choose this value. So, suppose I take this, this is my x bar. Now, from here I can write this equation, from here I will get my k x bar is equal to f x bar minus p x bar divided by this x bar minus x i and this i is from 1 to 1, 0 to n. So, this is my x bar there. So, equation number 2 and this I take it 3. So, equation 2 can be written as f x is equal to p x plus k x bar. So, k x bar into now from the equation number 4, now we want to find magnitude of k x bar. So, this is I want to find. So, let us consider a function. So, I call it phi x. So, phi x I will represent like f x minus p x minus f x bar minus p x bar divided by this into pi x minus x i, i from 0 to n. So, I define the function like this one. So, call it 5. Now, from here you can see that phi at x i, so if putting x i x 0 I am putting, so this will be 0 and then from here this will again this, so from here you can say that if I put f x i it will be f x i minus p x i then this part will be 0 because they are same and this part will be 0 because here put x equal to x i. So, this is also 0. So, plus 0. So, from here I can say that this f x phi f x i is 0 for all i from 0, 1, 2 up to n. So, this is there. Now, from here also I can write phi x bar. So, phi x bar if I choose, so this minus this and this part will be cancelled out. So, that this part minus this part will be 0. So, from here I can say that phi of x bar is also 0. So, from here I can say that my phi x is a function that vanish at n plus 2 points because n plus 1 points are this and 1 point is x bar. So, I apply vanish at x n plus 2 points let us assume that that phi x and its derivatives are continuous. 
So I can apply the using Rolle's theorem. Phi x vanish vanishes at n plus two points. Phi dash x that vanishes at n plus one points. I am taking the derivative of this one and so on. So, from here I take phi n plus 1 x. So, this is the n plus 1 derivative that vanish at at one point at least one point. So, let us call it xi that belongs to x naught to x n. So, from here I can say that phi at n plus 1 at psi that is equal to 0. <coughs> now, we have the equation in phi. So, the equation number 5. So, now we take n plus 1 derivatives of equation number 5. So, when I take the n plus 1 derivative of equation number 5, I know that this polynomial is of degree n. So, if I take the n plus 1 derivative then its value will be 0. So, from here I can say that this will be equal to phi. So, that will be equal to f n plus 1 x minus 0 and from here you can see that this is just the constant value, but here it is a factor. So, if I take n plus 1 time difference derivative of this one, so I can I will get n plus 1 factorial from this. So, that you can verify from taking two factors. So, suppose I have a factor like this one x minus x naught into x minus x 1 taking the derivative. So, I just take the derivative, I will get, I will apply the product rule. So, this first function derivative of second is 1 plus x minus x 1. So, from here I can get that this will be equal to 2 x minus x naught minus x 1. So, this is the second quadratic polynomial, I am taking first derivative. If I take the second derivative of this, so, that will be 2 x minus x naught minus x 1. So, that will be 2. Similarly, if I take 3 factors like x minus x naught, x minus x 1 into x minus x 2 and taking the derivative. So, this is the quadratic, this is the cubic. So, in this case, if I take the cubic derivative of this, then it will be 6 and this will be equal to 3 factorial. So, I am taking n plus 1 times derivatives of this factors. So, I will from here I will get then this will equal to f x bar minus p x bar by multiply x bar minus x i i from 1 0 to n and this will be I can write this as a n plus 1 factorial. Now, for x is equal to xi, I will get my phi n plus 1 xi. So, this will be f n plus 1 xi and this factor will be same. The product n plus 1 and this die is equal to 0. I know from here. So, from here I will get that this is equal to 0, I will take this on the left hand side. So, from here I can write that f of x bar minus p x bar divided by x bar minus x i, i from 0 to n that will be equal to f n plus 1 xi 
by n plus 1 factorial. So, from here now from the equation and this factor I know the left hand side factor is if you see from here the left hand side factor is a kx bar. So, I can write that from equation 3 my kx bar will be f n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial. So, this is the magnitude I am finding. Now, the above equation, so from here the value of the equation number 4 becomes, so from equation 4 I, I will get that my or I can say from here that because my error is defined now, yeah, so this is my Rx. Now, from so using this, now the Rx can be defined as x minus x naught x minus x 1 up to x minus x n and the k x bar is f n plus 1 xi over n plus 1 factorial. So, this is the error. So, I call I can call it number 6 where this xi belongs to x 0 to x n. So, any value between x 0 to x n. <coughs> so, this is my error. So, in that case you can see that first of all I should know the value of the function and it is n plus 1 derivative. So, only then I can get this one. So, the from here I can find the upper bound also. The upper bound for error for error r x will be so, in this case my r x I can say that this will be less than equal to if I choose this value x minus x naught and if I choose this one the maximum of this. So, if I take maximum of all values. x belongs to x 0 to x n. So, what I do? I take any x which is the maximum of this value. So, all the maximum I choose. So, this r x will be always less than equal to this. So, that way we can define the maximum the upper bound for the error. it can be negative also in that case I will take the modulus value. So, no problem I can choose the modulus value or I can from here itself I can say that this will be always less than this the modulus value. So, that is gives me the upper bound for the error. Now, I want to define the now we want to define error in Newton forward defense method. As we have done in the previous lecture, we have discussed the Newton forward method. So, I want to define the that what will be the error in that case. So, the error in that case I can or the same thing will be there only thing is that I have to change my function f n plus 1 with the finite difference operator. So, I will apply this one. So, using mean value theorem I can write my f x naught plus h minus f x naught though that, that can I be represented by h f dash x naught plus theta 1 h, where theta 1 I can choose between 0 and 1. So, that is I can have from the mean value theorem. 
So, from here I can write this as a delta forward operator f x naught is equal to h f dash x naught plus theta 1 h. So, this is the function I have defined. Now, I can apply again. So, also we can apply mean value theorem again and in that case I will I can write that f dash x naught can be written as h square f dash x naught plus theta 1 h plus theta 2 or theta dash I should choose theta dash h where theta 1 and theta 2 or theta dash are all lies between 0 and 1. Now, from here I can write this as a h square f double dash x naught plus theta 1 plus theta dash h. So, from here I know that the theta 1 plus theta dash will be always less than between 0 and 2. So, from here I can write that this will be can be written as 1. So, from here I can write my second order finite difference forward finite difference operator as h square f double dash. So, this is the double dash I am taking is equal to x naught plus theta 2 2 h. So, I call it as a theta 2. So, this way we can define for so similar way I can define k. So, let us uh, take it k, kth forward finite difference operator. So, it can be written as x naught is equal to h k f k times differential derivative of this function and x naught plus k theta k h. So, using this one from here I can say that now if I take, so this theta k I know that lies between 0 and 1. When theta k is 0 we will get this value will be x naught. When theta k is 1 in that case this value will be x naught plus k h. So, this will be k times I am forwarding. So, this is k plus 1. So, that is I can call it x k. So, now from here I can say that that k times forward difference operator can be written as h k into f k some xi, where xi belongs to x 0 to x k. Okay. So, now we are able to define this one. So, from here I can write my f k xi will be equal to h k. So, this one I can choose where xi belongs to x naught to x k. Now, from the previous results, so this is my equation number 6. So, from the above results using above results equation 6, I can write my error function r x is equal to x minus x 0, x minus x 1, x minus x k. So, I am taking here is a k value and this I can choose. Now, my f n plus 1 xi will be same as the kth time the finite difference operator. So, from here I can write this as delta k plus 1. So, this f x naught is I know that this is y naught. So, from here I can write this is equal to y naught divided by h k plus 1 and this is k plus 1 factorial. Now, from here I can say that 
the error involved in the Newton forward difference operator is this one. So, that is the equation number 7 I can define and that is the error involved in the finite difference Newton finite forward finite difference operator. So, now we should stop here. So, today we have discussed about the errors involved in the interpolation when we have n plus 1 number of points in the given in the data and we want to interpolate the interpolating polynomials. So, in the next lecture we will continue with this one. So, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much.